got a few Game Boy Advance SP models that I'm trying to figure out how to fix. This is a graphite model that I got pretty cheaply on eBay. Um, it does have some screen leak, and I will be showing you that here in just a moment. Overall, the thing is actually in pretty good shape. Still has the stickers, the volume slider moves pretty easily, all the buttons work. When you first fire it up, of course you can't see it because the screen is white, so I'll have to show you that with a game inserted. So here we will have Final Fantasy VI inserted. Um, when you have the text that first pops up on the screen, you can see that it's a little bit faded. Um, it's really bad on a solid black screen as you can see right here. Now this isn't obviously a huge deal, the thing is playable, but it does kind of tarnish the image to the point where it's not that enjoyable. This is an AGS-001 that I'll be stealing parts from if need be. Same with this one, that one's already partially disassembled. An AGS-101 uses a PH-00 and Y-0 bit. I'm just using a cheap HyperTuff tool set that I got at Walmart for less than 15 bucks. I'm going to start by removing the battery cover, and that uses a Philips 00 bit. With that removed, I'll just set it aside and quickly remove that battery and set it aside as well. Now I'm going to switch over to the Y0 bit and that's going to be removing the six screws along the bottom. Be careful not to strip any of these screws as I did here, so I'm going to be having to take one of those screws from the top Game Boys. I don't know if you can see it very well in the video, but this is the stripped screw that I'm going to be putting back into the blue Game Boy. That Game Boy is just for parts. Um, I wanted to use the better screw on my Keep Game Boy, the AGS-101. These four screws are longer than the two that are underneath the battery and under the cartridge bay here. I found that the battery cover was a perfect place to put all those screws just to keep them organized because you don't want to lose those, they are tiny and I am blind. With those screws removed, that bottom plate should come off and you can just set it aside as well. Now I'm going to be removing these three Phillips 00 screws. and I'm just setting those aside as well. Now I need to remove this motherboard. You gotta be careful because those buttons can go flying. You gotta remove this rib ribbon cable by pulling on these two tabs on the left and right side. So then I'm just gonna take that motherboard and the buttons and set them aside as well so they don't go missing. Now I'm gonna remove this one last screw. It's a Phillips 00 and that holds the hinge piece on so the ribbon cable doesn't just go flopping around. I used a pair of curved tweezers to pull the rubber nibs that cover the screws on the screen off. It was easier said than done. You want to be careful because you don't want to break those things. They are replaceable, but I wanted to go for originality.
Now I'm going to need to remove five Phillips 00, zero screws to take the screen cover off. With those five screws removed, I'm going to now need to remove that top part. This one took a little bit more effort. I had to use my nail and pry along the edge where some of them just separate really easily. Now I'm just going to take that top plate off and set it aside. And then I'm going to pterodactyl claw the screen out of the body. I'm going to be removing the glass cover, or the plastic cover rather, that says Game Boy Advance SP on it so that I can see the screen underneath. I'm being careful not to flex the screen too much here because I don't want to break it any more than what I feel it already is. Eventually, the thing finally separated. This is the LCD screen by itself. You see these two metal contacts here. Those are what we're going to be focusing on. Um, this is what I was thinking on this first screen was what was causing the issue with the screen leak. Um, I'm not very educated on that, but that apparently is that the liquid crystal solution has actually come out. To test these screens, I like to put the board in the bottom part of the shell and put a Game Boy Advance cartridge in there because then it doesn't fall out, as you can see here. When I opened the LCD, these little lenses fell out. I originally put them back in the wrong order, and it made the image fuzzy with lines. So I figured out you have to put them in a particular order. You have to put the largest one in first, then the second largest, then the third, and then the one with the smallest tab on the very top uh, from this point of view here. Just know this isn't really an instructional video. If you do this, you're doing so at your own risk, and you can damage the screen further than what you may know. With the Graphite SP reassembled, I'm moving on to a pink unit that has lines in it that I think I might be able to repair. I disassembled this one ahead of time just to save a little bit of time. I'm using that same cartridge just to hold the board into the body. Now I'm going to hook up this LCD screen so I can show you what issue it has. I found on this LCD screen that if I pressed on those two metal contacts I showed earlier, it would actually eliminate these lines. So I'm hoping with that soldering iron, I might be able to just heat up those contacts and eliminate those lines. So you can see that really well on a black screen there. Those lines are gone if I apply pressure.
That's where maybe the soldering iron can come in. I've heard this is called re-soldering or reflowing the solder. So that solder that's been in there for, you know, almost 20 years may just need to be reflowed so those lines will go away. I applied heat and just kind of let it rest there. I didn't put too much pressure on it, but I thought maybe the heat just going through that contact would reflow the solder for me. Um, it almost seemed like it was damaging the screen more than anything. Um, going from right to left, it was actually turning the entire left portion of the screen totally white. So I did this periodically, um, giving it time to rest, and every time I did that I was actually noticing the lines were starting to diminish. After a while of applying the soldering iron, I noticed that it was really malleable. I was seeing the lines were um, turning white and coming back relatively quickly, so that means that the solder was beginning to flow properly. With that heat still in there, I used a soft cloth and just kind of patted the ribbon cable. After doing this a few times, I got down to just one line and applied that soldering iron. And there you have it, it looks like that solder has been reflowed. No more lines. All right, let's see this thing reassembled with no lines. From the moment that I can see this text here, I realize those lines are not visible any longer, which means this thing is definitely playable. I've actually got the box and manuals and everything for this thing, so I've got a complete AGS 101 now. Pretty exciting. This is one of the only Final Fantasy games I've never been able to play, and I wanted to play it on the Game Boy Advance because I've heard it's one of the best versions of it, so now I'm actually going to get to that with a fully functional Game Boy Advance SP. I never actually was able to own one of the 101 units, so I'm really excited to play it with a full backlight and those really bright colors. Let's see if I can find another one on eBay for cheap that just has a good screen in it, maybe with a waterlogged board or something, and I will report back with you guys, hopefully with a better made video by that point, showing the process of putting a better screen in this thing. I think what happened is somebody had stepped on this thing um, and it put pressure on the screen and cracked it because I did notice there was a small crack in there right where the bright white is, which means that the liquid crystal has leaked out. I hope this video disproves some of those people on Reddit that were saying these screens were not repairable. I heard that if there were lines on the screen, it was no longer salvageable, and I disproved that theory. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.